When you're playing with fire, expect it to get hot, yo. Just accept it. It's going to be hot. <laughs> you got to know fire is hot to even know how to handle it, right? And to do that, somebody can't just tell you, oh, fire is hot. Careful, you might burn yourself. Nah, nah, none of that. None of that. Otherwise, you'll be scared of shit your entire life if someone just tells you it's hot like fire and you've never actually handled it once. You have to be exposed to it. That kind of experience only comes from personal interaction. That kind of experience only comes from a life having been lived. And what's the point of fire anyways? If it's not to burn, if it's not to heat up things, melt things, expand, have things become malleable, use it to mold and to flex. You got to know how to handle fire as well as create it. Does that make sense? You gotta learn how to handle heat and apply it. That's what knowing and understanding is. It's not just somebody telling you, oh, don't do this because it's hot. Don't do that because you'll burn yourself. Sure, when we're younger and our parents tell us not to do this or not to do that, don't go out too late. There isn't anything out there for you after dark. You know, that in itself comes from experience also. I mean, that's advice in and of itself. And they can tell you to a, a great extent if they're really good at analogizing their life experiences to the circumstances in which you live in, then that might be effective. But just because somebody who is older at one point was your age doesn't mean they know exactly what the fuck they're talking about. Because they might have seen fire and walked away from it. Or they might have gotten lucky and never got close to the flames. It's important to remember that the point of experience is to use it. Otherwise, you'll forget it. And what's the point of having been exposed to it? If you just aren't, if you're just not going to remember it, <laughs> if you're just going to forget your experience, what's the point of having learned? And to do that, well, I mean, you have to practice. You have to practice your craft, you have to practice consistently. And in that way, you'll uh, be better. You'll, you'll develop muscle memory for it. Your performance will be smoother. And you will have to think less about it might even develop style points. A derivative of that is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. In the social context, playing with fire is like playing with uh, an agenda. Manipulating an agenda uh, being able to behold an agenda and then use it to your advantage. It's like flipping... <laughs> it's like flipping uh, ideologues on their head and using them for their utility only and not for their value. Because a lot of these fucking ideologies out there today, be they collectivism, centrism, anarchism... A lot of them, and they're theoretically, as folks would argue them, yeah, every, every fucking theory on paper is perfect, right? Every theory is airtight until you introduce a human element to it, 
until you realize it's average to below average to some people above average motherfuckers who are the ones who have to carry out the agenda. And then you realize the agenda isn't all that well thought out. It doesn't have all the contingencies, doesn't have all the backups baked into it. When there's motherfuckers taking advantage of its shortcomings at every turn. The below average fools just showing up for the check and the above average fools showing up for the power. How's that? How's that? Showing up for the power, showing up for the check, showing up for the money, or showing up for the power. Very few people actually do both. I mean, in the, in the sense that they've got a passion for what they do when they should. It's a, sta- it's a sad state of affairs, but at the same time, you've got to be cognizant of the fact that a lot of people just don't want to work. And those people who do want to work, a lot of those people will only work for their own interests, even if they are put into a team setting. They're going to uh, advocate for their own best interests, for that of their family, for that of their friends and their closest associates. And for that, they're willing to bend the rules and break the law and then fuck other people over. Thinking, thinking that they're winning until they meet an actual corporate cowboy. <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. Playing with fire, it's how close you can get to it. How close, how long you can hold it without singeing yourself, without burning yourself, without it leaving a mark. I mean, it requires a little tolerance. It requires uh, some callousness. Why? Because a lot of that fire that we're talking about in a social context is emotion. It's thinking on emotion and then rationalizing it into logic. Rationalizing one's logic around one's emotion. And it could be effective in some instances. In others, it isn't. Why? Because a lot of self-preservation might be put off to the wayside just to entertain the pleasure sensors of the mind, just to acquiesce to somebody's emotional outburst, somebody's emotional outrage. And yet their reward feedback system is satisfied because they, they saw some positive action from their, <laughs> their adult tantrum, their quote-unquote professional tantrum. I mean, that's what a, being emotional will get you. And, and sometimes the, the action, the results, aren't always positive. Sometimes they are very negative. Sometimes you'll be pushed out of corporate. Sometimes you'll be pushed out of this entire realm for being emotional. Emotions can get you killed. It ain't that far to imagine somebody rationalizing their emotions in in the setting that they believe is going to be of most uh, benefit, of, of most, ben- what is it? Of most benefit to them, yeah, of most benefit. Be it to their reputation, to their credibility, maybe their popularity, maybe their politics. A lot of it is going to be optics and the perception that they want others to have of them. And so they're willing to sacrifice, they're willing to sacrifice objective value and utility wholesale for just for the sake of popularity just for the sake of of not of not holding a a contrarian view 
of of a system or a syllogism, some type of logical process that makes no sense. Why? Because it might be founded in, on emotion. It might be founded on, on something that that doesn't follow a natural order or a natural sequence to life. And a lot of these and so a lot of these motherfuckers they put on an artificial front. Why? Because they aren't observant of the rules of nature, of the law of mankind, not just the law of man. It's funny, I want to say. I mean, I laugh. I do laugh at it. But that's only because of the results that people attain. They get themselves uh, into positions that that beg the question, are they weak for seeking that popularity, for seeking that external validation? I mean, arguably they're strong because mentally or, or spiritually they were able to subvert natural order for the sake of, uh, <laughs> of the rule what is it? For the sake of mob rule. So they're able to appeal to the masses, have a mass appeal. But then ultimately, the masses, in instances like that where emotion fuels logic, where emotion fuels, fuels. I never realized I. I don't, don't enunciate that completely. Where emotion fuels the logic. Ideologies tend to cannibalize its advocates. And damn, that's a sight to see. But I don't put it past anybody. This corporate cowboy shit, I know sooner or later will catch up to me. But it's what I expect. I'm already planning for it. And I've told myself, and you could catch me on a couple of previous episodes, episodes saying that should I ever be put in a position where I have to justify fucking over somebody with a better idea, with a more innovative concept for my own comfort sake, for my own comfortability, for my own retirement or, or to secure some type of payoff. I hope to God that motherfucker knocks me off first. I hope to God I, I off myself off first. I off myself first? Yeah, I off myself first. Because, you know, God forbid. Lord forbid I put myself in a position to suppress what's coming. And what's coming is... It's always revolution. What's coming is always innovation. What's coming is always better. And if I'm to believe that the older generation is is, is the arbiter of what's better, nah. Honestly, I, I can't. I'm, I have to level with you. I've, I've, honest, obviously, older generations have found what is best what works for them but as far as what's better I mean what's better is objective what's better is is the truth for lack of a better concept and we're on constantly on a search for it we don't stop we shouldn't stop so the moment that I try and put a stop to the search for truth I I become fake I become an agent of falsity and agents of, of falsehoods <laughs> and, and that in itself is deserving of uh, the end of the big fucking sleep until then you're playing with fire you're playing with fire until you get burned so you shouldn't be surprised folks shouldn't be surprised when they get burned they got burned for a reason even if it was very petty. 
even if it was for the pettiest of reasons. You shouldn't feel hurt about it. You should understand that people lose life and limb in search of the truth. People have risked life and limb. People have taken life and limb just in search of the truth. Now imagine trying to present it. (laughs) You got to protect your own fucking neck because people out there are on a mission to suppress it. It's a double-edged sword, man. And very few people can fashion a handle using the truth. Very few people can get a grasp of the truth. The truth is like... The truth is, is, is hard, but malleable. The truth needs fire. The truth needs heat. The truth is never settled. You know why? Because it's, uh, it can be passed on. It can be distributed. It can be sold. It can be made tangential. It could, it, it, it could be made, uh, tangible. It can be objectified. It's a difficult concept to grasp because the truth in and of itself is eternal. It's everlasting. And for that reason, because it changes in form constantly, innovation never stops. This corporate cowboy shit is for life. wise man once said that stillness is death but denying yourself or denying others the search for truth their search for truth leads to the same end as well yo you should follow uh, the Instagram page It's still up, not active, because we're shadow banned, so we can't post shit on it. But it's Corporate Cowboys. You'll recognize the uh, profile picture. On Patreon, also, we're we're, going to start putting up additional episodes and really leveling out the tiers. Starting to uh, make a little space in my schedule, so I'll be more active doing that finding ways to get this out to other distribution outlets like BitChute, Vimeo, that sort of thing. If you want to donate, you can, you can do so at paypal.me slash corporate cowboys cash app. I've got a cash app also that's active and uh, always subscribe. If you want to donate, keep this operation non for profit until we can bankroll it with uh, with with grease money, <laughs> with grease money, with blood money, with actual corporate money. How about that? With actual corporate money. Yeah, we'll call it corporate money. Corporate will just be the uh, the uh, more generalized verb. The more the more generalized the uh, not not a not a verb. Just term, the more generalized term for it. Dirty or not. Here we come. Oh, proof of life. Today being Saturday, February 26th, 2022. Have a nice weekend.